For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and I will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt. I will execute judgment, for I am the Lord. I guess he can say that. I like the way he emphasizes that, for I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a token unto the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, not when you see it, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial. And ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Matthew 26, 28. For this is my blood. And by the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. This morning, my subject is redeemed by the blood. I am redeemed by the blood. Would you, with your voices and your hand, help me thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ and for the things that he has done. Shout to the Lord with a big shout. He is worthy. Does everyone have communion? Does everyone have communion? Does anybody not have communion? If you don't have communion, we'll get it to you when I get through preaching. We'll make sure we get communion to you. God bless you. You may be seated. From the Genesis, from the very beginnings and the very first book in your Bible to the last book in your Bible, which is known as the book of Revelation, the entire Bible has to do with forgiveness and remission of sins. Now let me stop and say that again. The entire Bible, what it has to do with is forgiveness and remission of sin. The Bible makes it clear in the book of Hebrews 9, 22, for without the shedding of blood, there is no Remission of sin. In the Garden of Eden, the Bible tells us of forgiveness and remission of sin, beginning with the covering. The Lord God slew an innocent animal and poured out its blood, and the earth drank it up. Then he took the skins of that animal that he had slain, and he made clothing, and he covered the nakedness of our first parents, Adam and Eve. In Exodus chapter 12, we have the institution of what is known biblically as the Passover, the memorial of the redemption by the blood. When you study the Old Testament, you know that before the blood was applied, there were nine plagues that was visited upon the nation of Israel. One It was a plague of all water turned into blood. Of course, they didn't have water fountains. But if they would in that day and time, if you would go back there today, and we were living then, you hit the water fountain, blood would squirt out. The Red River would be blood. Lake Bulo would be blood. All water was turned to blood. The second plague was frogs. Frogs covered the land. They were in their homes, their beds, their kitchen, their chairs, their table. Here a frog, there a frog, everywhere a frog, frog. There were frogs everywhere. The third plague was lice. The fourth plague was flies. The fifth plague was a disease that took out their livestock. The seventh plague was boils on man. They say one boil is very painful, but everybody was full of boils. And I know if they're anything like the shingles, please, please, Lord, don't let us get the shingles. The seventh plague was hailstones. The eighth plague was locusts. The ninth plague was darkness, no light, total darkness, no bit of light. But none of these things caused Pharaoh to let the people go. None of the plagues from frogs to lice to flies to everything to water to blood, none of that caused Pharaoh to let the people go. It was when they got to the 10th plague 
which was the death of the firstborn in every home, from Pharaoh in the palace to the peasant that lived in the hut. The firstborn of everyone that didn't have the blood applied died. The only power of deliverance from Egyptian bondage and Pharaoh's grip, God said, it's when I see the blood, I will pass over you. I'm emotional. Mickey, tell you I've been emotional for two or three days, and it's not because I have the shingles. It's because of me preaching about the blood of Jesus Christ. This message has consumed me, and I apologize if I could go back to the first service. Mother told me it's one of the best I've done, yet I went in my office and cried because I thought I could do it better preaching about the blood of Jesus Christ. I can't do it justice today. There's no way I can preach it good enough today. When I get through, I'm going to go home and wish I'd have said something or done something better. You just don't know how powerful that the blood of Jesus Christ really is. Nine indescribable plagues could not and did not loosen the devil's hold. The devil doesn't give up easy. But when they got to that Passover lamb, without blemish that was slain. And the blood was caught in that basin. And they were to take that shed blood of that innocent lamb into blemish, without blemish, and strike it on the two doorposts and on the upper doorposts, which made a sign of the cross. They would put that blood on that upper beam. And they would put that blood on that side beam. And they would put that blood on that side beam. And it made the symbol and the presence of a cross. And they placed that blood there as evidence that upon this house the blood had been applied and Jesus could not touch the firstborn of that house. When I see the blood, I will pass over thee. Can you imagine if we lived, follow me just a moment, if we lived in that Old Testament, here's what you would have done this week. You would have gotten a lamb as the priest of your home. You would have gotten a lamb. You would have shut it up for 7 to 14 days. You would continually look over that lamb and make sure that that lamb was without blemish or without spot. And you had to take that lamb and you had to prepare it. And then after you found that that lamb was spotless and that lamb was without any uh, thing upon its body that could hinder it being a perfect lamb, you would then slay that lamb. You would take that blood and you would apply that blood to the doorpost of your home. It is the redempting blood of Jesus Christ. It's the redempting power of Jesus Christ. It was their only salvation. They had to have that blood applied to their door for their firstborn to be saved. That's when Pharaoh released and relinquished the hold. And he said, take everything you got. When his firstborn died and the firstborn of his families were dying. And when the firstborn of all of Egypt was dying, he told them, said, get your family, get your cattle. I'm not going to hold you any longer. I'm not just going to let you go. I'm going to run you out of here. That's the power of what God can do. That's the power of how God can take care of it. And that's what we're about to do in this service today. We're not leaving a one in our family down in Egypt. I made my mind up, the church that I pastor, I'm going to do everything I can to love you. I'm going to do everything I can to help you. I'm going to do everything I can to make sure you redeem. I'm going to do everything I can to make sure you do everything you can to make sure your family say, we don't want to leave nobody down here in this world. When the rapture takes place, I want everybody to be ready for the rapture of the church. Nothing but the blood. Leviticus chapter 16, it describes the great day of atonement. We know that they would go one time a year. That high priest would go in to the mercy seat and there he would apply the blood. Abel's lamb, listen, you hadn't heard me say this, Abel's lamb redeemed one man. The paschal lamb redeemed one family. The day of atonement lamb redeemed the nation of Israel, but the lamb of God redeemed the whole world. Huh. That blood was sprinkled on that mercy seat. He applied it seven times. That's God's perfect number. He applied that blood seven times to that mercy seat. And now we have the privilege of running to that mercy seat, knowing that the blood has set us free and the blood has 
cleansed us. No biblical theme. Nothing in this Bible. There's not a subject exceeds the blood of Jesus Christ and its role in atonement. It processes of divine redemption in our life. Leviticus 7 and 11, it is the blood that maketh atonement for the soul. The soul will spend eternity either in heaven or in hell, either with the angels or with the demons. But it's the blood of Jesus Christ that makes the difference between time and eternity. It's the blood that's going to make the difference between whether you go to heaven or whether you go to hell. That's why what we're going to do today that represents his blood, that's the difference between heaven and hell right there. That's why I'm looking forward to taking it. It's taking me back to when I was born again and it's redeeming me of all of my sins. Thank God for the blood. It's the blood that atones. It's the blood that saves. It's the blood that gets your name written in the Lamb's book of life. It's the blood. It's the blood. It's the blood. It's the blood. blood. I have an assignment today. I have one assignment, and that's to convince you that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. That's the details of the better covenant, the blood of Jesus Christ. There is no forgiveness. There is no remission without the blood. There is no propitiation without the blood. It's what makes the satisfaction for our guilt and the penalty of our sins. On the cross, our Lord assumed that guilt. He paid the penalty with his own blood and he has removed the cause of any of our lives. You look at me today. If you have been buried in the name of Jesus and your sins have been washed away and the blood has been applied, look ye Look me square in the eye this morning. There's not a thing you have done. There's not a sin that you have committed. There's not a place you've gone that Jesus Christ cannot forgive you of that sin. (laughs) Pastor, you don't know what I've done. You don't know what I've said. You don't know where I've been. You don't know the sins I've committed. I've lied. I've stolen. I've murdered God. I've done some things. Pastor, you just don't understand. I may not understand your depths of sin, but you don't understand what pastor is trying to get across to the rest of these people, and that is that God doesn't measure sins by nines or tens or eight. We're all sinners that have to be saved by grace. We're all sinners that need the blood of Jesus Christ. Now the consequences of our sins are different. The consequences in time are different. But with the blood of Jesus Christ, everybody has been redeemed. I don't care how bad it is. I don't care how deep the sin is. My sins have been taken care of by the blood of the Lamb. He said when you take this blood, there is no just no reconcil no uh No more sin applied to thy life. There is no salvation without the blood. There's no sanctification without the blood. There's no reconciliation without the blood. It takes the blood. You're going to hear today. I've wept and I pray. It's the blood. It's the blood. It's not the POA. It's not pastor. It's not a Bible study group. It's the blood that takes care of everything. And when you have been buried in the blood... When you've been redeemed by the blood, you don't need anything else than the blood. The blood of Jesus Christ sanctifies and saves. The blood of Jesus Christ sets free. The blood of Jesus Christ redeems. There's nothing like the blood of Jesus. Nothing like the blood. That Old Testament story of mankind finding salvation through the blood as it was sprinkled. What a story. In the New Testament, it's ratified by the blood of Jesus Christ on that cross. Without Jesus' death on the cross and the shedding of his life blood. All the sacrificing of goats, all the sacrificing of bullocks, all the sacrificing of sheep that I mentioned a while ago, having to get them all together, having to go do that, having to take that blood out, then have it applied by that high priest of the mercy seat. All of that was taken care of by one lamb that went to one cross and shed his blood. And can you imagine him hanging there as we've tried to show in Messiah and above all, him hanging there for the sins of the people. You let me tell you something. I'm not going to 
devalue that today. And I'm not going to let you devalue by saying you don't know how big my sin is. You don't know how powerful the blood is. I'm not going to let you devalue the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm not going to let you say you're not worthy of the blood. You are worthy of the blood of Jesus Christ. I know what you mean. I say it myself. Oh, I'm just not worthy. I'm just not worthy. He wants us to quit saying, I'm just not worthy. Because he came and because he died, he wants you to know you are worthy of the blood of Jesus Christ. You are worthy of your sins being redeemed by the blood. You are worthy. Get your head up today. I don't care what you did last night. Get your head up today. Get a smile on your face. Well, you don't know. They'll talk about me. You don't know what I've done. People know in the church what I did. I don't care what the people know. Let them chat. Let them get on all the social media. They'll have to answer to God for that too. Don't worry about what anybody says. You get your hands up in the air. You've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. You've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Oh, oh. That's it. I ain't going to let nobody steal my joy. All of us are with sin, have sin, but we've been redeemed by the blood. Your sacrifices, you can draw it on heaven's bank. Every time they kill one of those goats or sheep in that Old Testament, they were just postponing it for another year. They were taking it out of the bank account. They knew they were, somebody was going to have to pay it back. They were withdrawing from the bank of heaven. They were writing a check that they couldn't cash. They were writing a check and just putting it there. They couldn't withdraw it from the bank until Almighty God robed himself in flesh and came to this earth. And I'm going to shout it one more time to you today. He didn't tell us to celebrate his birth. And we do. It's my favorite time of the year. I love Christmas. But he didn't tell us to celebrate his birth. Next Sunday, we're going to walk in here, some with new clothes, some of your big old hats on. I hope you have them on. It makes Easter. It's going to be a great morning. Next Sunday, next at 9 and 11, going to be a great Easter Sunday morning. But he didn't tell us to celebrate Easter. The one thing he told us to celebrate was his death and the opportunity to take it and to show it. He said, as often as you do this, you do show my death till I come. We celebrate Christmas, we celebrate resurrection, and we should, but we should celebrate today more than anything else what God has done through the power of his body and the power of his blood that was the ultimate deposit. No, no bulls and goats and ashes and heifers. You can't do it. You can't purify my pledge. But the blood of Jesus Christ, how much more shall the blood of Jesus Christ, who through the eternal spirit, the almighty God, offered himself the son of flesh, the spotless lamb, harmless, undefiled, the heavenly lamb, the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. He who John announced saying, behold, the lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Therefore, he allowed Simon Peter to preach it on the opening day of the church. Repent and be baptized, every one of you. If you hadn't been baptized in Jesus' name, today's the day. They told me we baptized three today already, right? We baptized three, they told me. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> for the remission of sin. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and your children and all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Therefore purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Get rid of those condemnations. Get rid of those things that without... Uh, without the shedding of blood, there would have been no remission of sin. Get rid of that that's been condemning you. Put it out of the way. For without, here's a powerful statement. You ready for it? This is going to really change your life. This is a powerful statement. You, you can already tell I'm sarcastic, right? Without physical blood, there is no physical life. If you don't have blood, ladies and gentlemen, important announcement. Call the news. Pastor Mangan said, if you don't have blood, you can't live. So without the blood of Jesus Christ, there is no spiritual life. What blood is to this life? His blood is to spiritual life. You can't go without the blood of Jesus Christ. It is your spiritual life. It is your spiritual life. We were all born sin. We were all born bad. There's none good. You got to be born again. 
They give vaccines for everything else now. Vaccine for COVID. You decide if you want to take that, that's your business. I decided at the beginning of it, I wasn't going to get in that battle. So if you want to take it, fine. If you don't want to take it, fine. We're going to all be saved and sanctified at the end of time. But there's a vaccine they claim now for COVID that takes care of it. And we pray that it does. But let me tell you, the blood is the vaccine for sin. When you get the blood applied to your life, you get a vaccine. And you get two shots of it. One when you're born of water and one when you're born of the Spirit. And those two shots, well, that's a good message right there. Those two shots is what can redeem you. Those two shots are what can change your life. Those two shots is what can turn you around. The blood of Jesus Christ. Go ahead and let a shout come up out of there, right? Come on, balcony. Let a hand clap be in your hand today. Blood of Jesus Christ. I've got one goal today. There's nobody going to leave here under condemnation. I have one goal today. You're going to leave here delivered. If you don't, it's going to be your stinking fault. I'm going to pray the judgments on you if you leave here condemning yourself. You're not supposed to leave here. You've been redeemed by the blood. You got baptized in the name. Your sins are gone. Quit bringing them back up. Quit reminding him about them. Quit telling him all that stuff. Rejoice that your life has been redeemed and your soul has been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. The only vaccine for this world pandemic called sin is water and spirit. And as they do for this vaccine, we give you two shots, unless it's Johnson and Johnson. We're going to stick with the old ones. It's two shots. You've heard of the insurance policy called Car Shield. Well, the eternal life insurance is the blood shield, the never dying soul shield. That is the purpose of communion, the Lord's Supper. You will not find where we're commanded to celebrate anything else but this. And even a redeemed, born again people cannot have fellowship with Him and constantly and continually be cleansed from defilement without daily talking to Him in repentance. And not a day goes by that I don't wake up in the morning and I don't go to bed at night. My son is sitting here uh, uh, over here to my right. My family is here. He would tell you it wasn't a day, wasn't a night if I was in town that we didn't have prayer together every night before we went to bed. What were you doing? I was applying the blood. He would tell you when school started every year. We didn't do this often, but I'd do it two or three times a year. Me, his mama, Michael, and Gentry, I would take this oil and I would go to the door and I would put it over the doors. We went to every window of my house and I put it over the windows and this is what I said. It's an old Pentecostal saying. You may not understand it and don't ask me to explain it. I just got it from the old timers. You plead the blood. And so I just went and put that on the doorpost and I pled the blood. I said, in the name of Jesus, I pleaded over my kids. In the name of Jesus, I pleaded over Mickey. In the name of Jesus, I pleaded over this home. Don't you let any evil spirit come through those windows. Don't you let any evil spirit come through that door. And you know what? The blood can keep them out. If we keep the blood activated. Oh, and I shouldn't do this. I'm going to get in trouble. And it's going to cause debate. But somebody asked me the other day, can you be full of the Holy Ghost and be demon possessed? No, you can't be. But you can be full of the Holy Ghost and have a spirit that's not of God that binds you. God's not going to dwell where the devil is. I can tell you that. But let me say it stronger than that. He's not going to dwell where God is. And if you've got God inside of here, the devil ain't going to be in there. But there's spirits that attack us. There's spirits that come against us. And as long as we're living, there's going to be spirits come against us. But as long as we got his body and as long as we got his blood, I can look at the devil and say, I take authority over everything that's coming against me. I plead the blood. 
Now when the evening was come, he sat down with the twelve. And as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. Then verse 26 through 28, the Lord's Supper is instituted. Jesus identified elements of the Passover meal as his body and his blood. He said, this is my body, and this is my blood. And as they were eating the bread, Jesus took it, and he broke it, and he blessed it, and he gave his disciples. He said, take and eat. And he took the cup, representing the blood, and he gave thanks. I want you to notice that God gave thanks. Two times, God gave thanks. So before you take communion today, just don't repent, but give thanks. God sure has been good to you. Now you usually don't hear that at a communion service, but give thanks. I thank God for what he's done for me. I thank God for the way he's redeemed me. And by the way, it is Palm Sunday, and I'm rejoicing about that. I'm happy about that, so I'm going to get me a Hosanna. I'm going to get me two Hosannas. I'm going to get me three Hosannas. And I'm going to say, I've been redeemed by the blood. Hosanna to the highest. Hosanna. You're my savior. Bruce, you're my, he's my redeemer. Hosanna. 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 <laughs> Worship him from the depths of your soul. Give him your Hosanna right now. Let a Hosanna come up from over there. I'm getting so many things up here, I'm going to knock everything over, but I can't help it. Give thanks. Drink ye all of it. Now, here's what I believe. I believe this is a symbol of his blood. It's taken in place of his blood. And what I have felt in my spirit, maybe it's because I have been so sick since last Saturday or Friday, a week ago. Maybe that's why I have felt healing so strong. But today, I am believing that when we take communion, that we're just not going to have our sins freshly atoned. I believe when you take communion today, that healing is going to come to your body. I'm speaking healing to your body. I'm not just speaking of the body. God's going to heal our spirits. Some of us need our spirits healed. Some of us need our spirits touched. Some allowed things to get in there don't belong in there. Don't take communion unworthily. Get your spirit right. This blood is going to cleanse everything today. And when you take this blood, it's going to heal. You're going to be sanctified. You're going to leave here rejoicing by the blood of the Lamb and what the blood has redone. Healing is going to come when we drink the cup in Jesus' name. Matthew 26 and 29. But I say unto you, and I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's house. The Lord's Supper, the memorial supper, will give way to the marriage supper of the Lamb. We're going to take communion one more time after we're raptured. And it's going to be at the marriage supper of the Lamb. We're going to sit down with him. And I just got a little bit to tell you. I think it's going to be more than grape juice and a little wafer. It's so stiff you can't hardly chew. But I think when we get to the marriage supper of the Lamb, that festival, Paul said, observing communion, for as often as you do eat this bread and drink, you do show that I am coming. So today in this congregation, I want to tell you what your repentance is going to do. Listen to me because I have not preached this before. It has thrilled me. It has engulfed me. I have preached the time that I have preached to get to this one portion of my message. And I didn't get it until just the last part of last week. But it's Hosea chapter 14. I will heal their backsliding. 
The backsliding referred to Israel's apostasy and idolatry. Again, forgiveness was based upon grace, not merit. He said, I can and I will. I will pardon you the most desperate sin. He said, I will love them freely. Israel, Israel that turned their back on me. Israel that crucified me. I will love them freely without a just cause. For no reason to call, love you. I'm going to love you. It don't matter what you've done. I'm going to love you whether you want me to love you or not. Doesn't matter how bad you've been. I'm going to love you in spite of it all. Even though Israel will give the Lord no reason to love her, he will just the same extend his love. Just as he will for all of us who come to him, return to him in humble repentance and supplication, he will love us. Then listen, my anger is turned away from him. He said, my anger is turned away from you. The anger that I had towards any is turned away from you. I will be as the dew of Israel. Dew speaks of the Holy Ghost, meaning I will baptize you with the Holy Ghost. He said, he shall grow as a lily. The lily speaks of righteousness, his righteousness that is freely given. He said, I will cast forth his roots as Lebanon, like a tree planteth by the water. His branches shall spread, and beauty shall be as the olive tree, and his smell as Lebanon. In fact, no insect nor serpent can be found where there are cedar trees. Now, Holden, or some of you men that know biology and other things of plant, I may need to be corrected on that because that is something I read. And everything you read may not be true. But I read where that a serpent or an insect will not dwell where there are cedar trees. So if you want to keep the devil out, grow a cedar tree in your life. Though who shall dwell in his shadow shall return. This is the resting place for the New Testament born again child of God under the shadow. That's how the prophet Hosea closes out his book under the inspiration. He says, who is wise? Who shall understand? Who is prudent enough to understand that the ways, the right ways of the Lord, the just ways of the Lord and walk therein. That's why my appeal to all who have not repented today to be baptized in the name of Jesus and have your sins washed away. And to those of us that have, when we take this bread which is his body and we take this cup today which is his blood everything is going to be redeemed on the inside of us and there is going to be a renewal that is going to be fresh and new I told Chris and Amy they were here for the early service that I believe when she drank that cup that healing was going to come sister Wiggins was in the early service Ronnie went in We've been praying for Ronnie Wiggins. He went in for his examination this week and the news came back that that growth or tumor is benign. So you can take Ronnie off of your prayer list. Somebody ought to rejoice about that. If that was my husband or my wife, I'd be rejoicing about that. The tumor's benign. So today is your day when you drink this cup, this healing cup, this day of atonement, the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Every sin you've ever committed is getting ready to be washed away. Don't you mention it again. Don't you talk about it again. I want you to testify, I guess, about it if you need to testify about it because we're saved by the tes our testimony, Revelation says. But I almost I want to tell you, I don't even want you to think about it. You're being redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. You're no longer condemned by Jesus Christ. We're all sinners that's been saved by grace. And today we're going to leave here rejoicing in what God has done and that we've been redeemed by the power of the blood. Would you get on your feet with me and would you help me praise the Lord with a Palm Sunday kind of praise? Yeah. Come on, men, lift your voices. Come on, ladies, lift your voices. Let there be a shout. Let there be a shout. Dan, take that one.
Go ahead, Dan, take that one there. Ra Rocky, take that. Walk around the sanctuary just praising God a minute. We're going to rejoice in the God of our salvation. We're going to rejoice that we've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. We're going to rejoice. We're going to rejoice. We're going to rejoice. Hey, men, lift your voices with me. You got to shout, men, lift your voices. There you go, men, lift your voices. Shout to God for the things he's done. Ladies, you have a shout. Lift your voice, ladies. Let the women of Zion travail. Let the women of Zion travail. Let the women of Zion travail. This is his body. It was broken on me. You can open up your cups. Oh, we don't have them yet. Those of you who don't have it, raise your hand. I'd say get it to him quick, please. What a sacred time. What a sacred moment. Thank you. Redeemed by the blood. Redeemed by the blood. Redeemed by the blood. Redeemed by the blood. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you. Yes. I have sent my servant today, and he has spoken unto you about my blood. My blood has been applied to your life. Your healing is in my blood. Your deliverance is in my blood. Yes. Receive ye my blood this yes. day, and you shall live. For when I see the blood, I will heal. I will deliver. I receive that. Ah, would you hold your communion up now and receive that unto God? That's it. Receive that unto God. Receive that unto the Lord, the God of our salvation. Receive that unto the Lord. Hey. Okay, hold on just a minute, Mother. Everybody would like to hear, if you've got a word here, Pastor Gentry, uh, Rocky. While she was speaking, the word came to me, ye shall know this day that what I've said is true. Ah, yeah. Ah. yeah, yeah. Shokaye alabai. Shokaye alabai on the side. Ye kasha kohoda bahai on the side. This represents his body. You can take it now. <laughs> this is his blood. Now remember what Pastor told you. I haven't said this at communion service. When we take this communion, there's people in this congregation that is going to be physically and emotionally healed when you take communion. If you receive that, this blood is getting ready to heal you. This blood is getting ready to heal you. You can take this blood in Jesus' name. <laughs> Healing in this congregation. Confirm your word, O oh Lord. Let your word be confirmed. Let's lift our hands and let a cry of victory and a shout. It can be heard throughout the camp. Let there be a shout heard throughout the congregation. 
If you're a visitor with us, raise your hands. You can do it this one time. Give a praise and a shout to the Lord for the things that he has done. Shout to God. Shout to God. He has redeemed us by the blood of the Lamb. He has redeemed us by the blood of the Lamb. You're going to praise me. Praise with me one more time. But I don't want you to forget Wednesday night. We've got a class for everybody. Come to church Wednesday night. Go to your class. Let's have a great time in class. Next Sunday morning is Easter and we're going to be celebrating. But I feel renewed. I feel healed. I'm claiming my healing in Jesus' name. Now would you shout with me one more time before you leave? Would you give a praise with me one more time before you leave? Thank God. To our online community, it's been such an honor having you on this Palm Sunday. Thank God for the blood that redeems us, that heals us, that sets us free. I pray that you claim the blood of Jesus Christ over your life today and that you spoke healing into your life and deliverance in your life by the power of his blood. If you've never repented of your sins, been baptized in his name, which is the washing of that blood, and been filled with the spirit, evidence of speaking in other tongues, that's for you, and we would love to talk to you about that. Join us sometime and write to us sometime if you've never experienced that, because we'd love to teach that to you. There's nothing like the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Accept that in your life today. Look forward to seeing you this Wednesday at 7 o'clock, next Sunday for Easter at 9 or 11. Thank you for being with us. Be blessed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Let him heal you, restore you, and bless you. May God go with you on this Palm Sunday. Thank you for being with us. Thank you.